Mam nadzieję, że macie przygotowane jakieś pytania, bo chętnie nasi goście na nie odpowiedzą. A już za chwilę na scenie Kairi, która ten Q&A poprowadzi i oddamy jej mikrofon. Tak jest. I jedna bardzo szybka uwaga, tak, brawa, brawa, moi drodzy. Jedna szybka uwaga, jeżeli będziecie mieli pytania... To... So please on stage, ja, ja, ha! Next on stage, Angela. And last on stage, Up Town Cosplay. And here we go. Good morning. Good morning, guests and judges. Good morning. Some of you were judges yesterday. Uh, first of all, how do you feel today? Oh, last day is always a little, uh, <laughs> you know, like I, in the mornings I feel pretty rough, usually on the last day of a convention, but today I am wearing a brand new costume, so that is what gives me energy, you know, always exciting. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, today is more just to hang out and We were looking forward to this Q&A and uh, be able to talk more with everybody. So. Thank you. <laughs> uh, very excited because uh, yesterday uh, we saw a lot of great stuff on stage and uh, I have the chance to meet all the contestants today and exchange with them, so yeah. I feel so good being here. I'm still having moments where I'm remembering that I'm all the way in Poland. <laughs> um, for having traveled so far to be here, and I'm so happy to be here, I'm surprised that I'm not more sleepy than I am, and I attribute that probably to you guys and all of your amazing energy. You're keeping me awake, so thank you. With all of your kindness and your sweet words to everybody who's come visit me, and to those of you who I haven't even met yet, you're keeping the vibes Wonderful, so keep it up. I'm enjoying myself. All right, so I have a few questions from my side and then we will switch to you guys. So please think about your questions already. Um, my first question will be maybe a bit generic, but I, I think it's really important for our audience to know what inspires you to do cosplay, to pick the right character? How do you pick what you cosplay and how do you feel motivated and excited with your projects? Uh, well, I, I, I've been cosplaying for over 20 years and have tried every genre, every type of costume. And so I've learned that I really need to feel a connection to the character. I have to really like the character and really like how I feel when I'm the character. So I always it, let that inspire me when I'm like cosplaying a character from a, um, you know, a source. And, but I also design my own original costumes and so I'm always inspired by, I don't know, pretty pictures, a lot of animals. I've like, done a jellyfish inspired costume and like a peacock dress and, you know, so I don't know, I just like cosplaying animals apparently. Um, but just anything really pretty and like construction wise, something I want to try out or like, oh, I'm in the mood for a ball gown or, you know, now I'm in the mood to, you know, have like a cute flowy costume or something. So, yeah, but it's, it's always the, it, it has to be for me and not because a group wants me to be this one specific character or it's not because a you know, it would go viral if I did it or if I like hopped on the hype train or something. I've learned to not pay attention to that because it just doesn't fulfill me nearly as much. Um, I would say uh, the same. Um, I, f I need to feel the connection with the character. Most of the time it's just right before after seeing a movie or a video game. <laughs> But it depends on the purpose of the costume. If I have to choose a costume for a contest, for example, uh, I will dive into a character that can allow me to tell a story on stage. Or uh, 
I usually start by a performance idea and after I add the character in mind that will suit the performance. So, yeah. I relate to a lot of the things that have already been said. I agree on in so many ways. For me, it really is about connecting to the character. I see myself as very much a performer and an actor when I cosplay. I love to showcase the personality of a character whenever I cosplay them. So if I don't feel connected or interested or drawn in by the way a character presents themselves, I'm probably not going to have as much fun cosplaying them. And if you're not having fun, I don't, I don't know if you're doing it right. I don't know if you've lived, if you've peaked in your cosplay experience because we're all just people who love media cultures playing dress up, right? So I think fun is the most important thing. So for me, obviously the look of a character is important to me. I like to, whether I'm buying a costume and doing extensive alterations to it to improve the fit or to add my own personal flair to it or if I'm making something from scratch like this one that I'm wearing, I want to know that I'm gonna feel like it's a challenge. I wanna challenge myself creatively when I'm putting together that costume. And then when I take it to a convention, I wanna challenge myself to portray them and bring them to life like they stepped out of the screen and they're real for the time that I'm cosplaying them. Because I think it's fun for me and it's really special when other people who interact with me can also experience that. Thank you. Maybe we can now quickly move to uh, on how does the cosplay fandom looks like in your country, in your town, in your favorite con places. Like, you know, just a few words that would uh, describe it. Um, in France, I think we are more... Uh, the most part of cosplay is uh, on stage with contest because we really love to perform with character. We don't have um, contest with only a catwalk with costume. Our contest is always with a performance to match the, the costume. And, uh, but we have also a lot of cosplayer that just walking around the alley and um, yeah. Where I'm from in America, in the United States, I'm from the West Coast, so far left side of the United States. Um, it's interesting because I feel like, in a sense, almost everybody knows everybody else. We all like to go to a lot of the same conventions all the time. We have a lot of local cons that we're willing to take a little bit of a road trip to. We love in character acting there we love performances and contests as well we love to showcase a character and be artistic and creative with it and it's a very close-knit community you have so many different friend groups where so many people from one group know a bunch of other people in another group and you can meet so many friends i feel like very very easily that way and it's it's really cool to have such a community that feels like a family I'm also from the United States, so <laughs> so is it really the same from from your eyes, from your view? I, from yes, um, I think I'm from the East Coast, but I travel around the United States a lot, and I'd say the one thing that is unique to the United States maybe is that cosplay is really far developed so there are a lot of fandoms so like within if you're within a fandom you can have friends from all over the country but there are like some fandoms that don't really cross each other you know like if you're really into i don't know ghostbusters you can like literally cosplay exclusively from Ghostbusters and have like the entire community supporting each other with where to buy the, the materials and how to make all the 
you know, um, the, the, the proton packs and such. And they, those people might never interject with, you know, the Genshin cosplayers, but everybody is still at the conventions and having a good time. So it's really neat. So what would be the thing that um, made you curious or surprised when you came here to Magnificon and to Polish cosplayers and Polish uh, cosplay fandom? Is there anything that is um, surprising for you? I think one thing that I have like two points. One that surprised me was how in many ways similar this convention is to the conventions that I'm familiar with. A lot of the same kinds of events, you guys like a lot of the same things that people from where I'm from like. and the love for a good cosplay contest and k-pop dances we all share so many passions and i feel like it's such a global love for something that brings us all together one thing i found really interesting is i watched the cosplay contest yesterday it was a lot shorter than i'm used to our cosplay contests where i'm from go for so many hours and sometimes it's almost too much. <laughs> it's a lot to sit through sometimes. But you guys are so incredibly talented. You're amazing. The people in the cosplay contest, all of the skits and performances, mwah, beautiful work. I loved it. Um, I was very impressed how the Genshin Impact community here is huge. Uh, I know in France it's a big uh, thing also, but not quite as much as here. Yesterday I saw so many cosplayers from Genshin Impact and I was very um, uh, surprised about that, yes. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, it's like Uptown said, there are a lot of similarities because Cosplay is a universal hobby and lifestyle, and uh, even if you don't speak the same language, you love the same things. And that's really why I love to travel and meet people from other countries. Um, the Polish fandom and cosplay community, I, I knew that you were very passionate, so it was really nice to see it and meet everyone and also like hear how long People have been cosplaying. Uh, I've met people that started in 2005, 2006. And uh, so it's kind of nice to know that your community also has like gone through, you know, the same evolutions. Um, and yeah, I, I love that there's like a more emphasis on performance here. I think in America, we do get kind of stuck sometimes with it all about the craftsmanship and you know like people are actually afraid to perform and so i really want the influence from europe and other regions to you know motivate the cosplayers in america to get over their stage fright and put on a performance damn it so i'll bring all that back with me and try to motivate them yeah that's very sweet um, so I have the last question, but I think it's very important, especially that I can see that there's some of the contestants from yesterday here on, on, on the audience. Uh, can you maybe give us a little bit of glimpse, like for judges especially, um, what do you think about the competition and was it really hard to, to pick and what was your like, you know, strategy on picking? Uh, it's like maybe just a small insight on how it was work. I would say that it was very difficult to pick and we had a uh, hard time to choose because uh, we saw so amazing work on stage and behind the stage because we had the opportunity to see the costume from, you know, close and all the details, all the different craftsmanship was amazing and uh, after on stage we were entertained all along during the contest and every one of them made such an incredible work 
So yeah, it, it was very tricky to find. It's always hard to choose one or two because when everybody puts so much heart and hard work in what they do, uh, you have to find, you know, tiny, tiny things to maybe balance with others. Yes, it was very hard, um, especially because we were selecting for international contests and each of those contests also have like their guidelines. So you, it's like, yes, you're trying to pick the best craftsmanship plus performance points, but you're also trying to pick someone who will, you know, be able to represent your country in that international setting. And so um, I, I think it's like sometimes for, for contests, I kind of wish they had more um, like maybe smaller awards and maybe like more flexibility for us to choose somebody to just like say thank you and we really like this aspect of your costume. Like in, in some contests I've judged in other countries or America, we have judges awards, we have honorable mentions, you know, we maybe have like an award for, you know, best something, best props or best wig. And those are like smaller awards, but they still, you know, give us a way to acknowledge the entry. And uh, when it's like a big, you know, selection for the international finals, it feels kind of like all or nothing. So um, I just want to say, if you competed in the contest and you did not get a prize, it does not mean you did anything wrong, okay? And um, I hope that you enter the contest for the experience to be able to know like what could you improve upon next time so maybe you get selected to go to Korea or go to France. Um, I think it does take like multiple tries uh, and you, you know, you sort of like, it comes down to not just having well-made costumes, but you have to balance the costume with mobility on stage for the performance. So if your costume is too cumbersome and you can't move that much, then, you know, like, like I just encourage people to really strategize and think about a entry where they can use the stage and have mobility on stage um, but yeah it was it was tough it always is tough it always weighs on me it weighs on Anshela you know we talk about it at night and we're just like we, we hope everybody is okay and you know we'll continue to compete thank you so much I know that was like a lot of work and um, I saw all the costumes up close and I really not envy you of your position yesterday so, good job. Okay, so that was my last question. And now I would like to encourage you to, yes, do that thing. Just raise your hand and come to the stage very close because we don't want the sound to be broken. And ask I'm the question. Wondering. Maybe. Um, I have a too little question for Atal. <laughs> Uh, first question. <clears throat> Can you sing? Yeah. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, the second question. Uh, <laughs> what's the most difficult lip sync um, performance that you uh, ever uh, made? the most difficult lip sync yes. performance I've ever yeah. done? Um, that's a great question. I've done so many. Uh, I would say potentially the most recent one that I did. Um, I did a couple of performances from the series Spy X Family, if you're familiar, where I cosplayed Lloyd and I had a co-host for the lip sync event that I host back at home in America who is cosplaying Yor, and we had one rehearsal. Our schedules did not mix very well that year. This was last year that this happened. 
We had one rehearsal to choreograph two numbers, and we had stage combat, we had stunts to do. I got thrown over her shoulder at one point. I was, it was a lot. Um, and that was about it, and it was crazy. I would not recommend not giving yourself time to practice. Plan ahead, don't procrastinate like I do. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, come over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have a question for all of you. Uh, because I got curious when we were talking about uh, what inspires you. Uh, you started talking a little bit about uh, what you start with and uh, how, you pro how you do your creative process. So I'm curious about what do you start, like for example the scene comes first and maybe then you just choose a type of, um, you know, a version of a character or maybe you have uh, an idea for a specific thing. Maybe there is something that you just leave for the last because you don't like to do it but you know you have to but you have to leave it for the end. I'm very curious about it. It is a very interesting question because um, most of the time, I, I would put com contest aside, but most of the time when I go to another character, it always starts with the fabric because I'm more a fabric person and um, when I go to the fabric store and I saw a fabric and I said, okay, this fabric will be perfect for that character and I really want to do it. Because I have a list of characters in my head that always follow me. And it's when I, yeah, when I saw a fabric or um, special materials that I will go for it. Yeah, it's sort of like the costume can be real if you have the materials in your house. So like it's, it's that research and uh, procure, procuring of materials. So whether you have to go buy the fabrics and materials, whether you have to order them online, wigs, you know, where do you get it? Which one do you start with? It's sort of that process of, you know, like you, once you pull the trigger on the first purchase, that's when you're like, oh, you're committed now to this costume. And then I sort of see it as when I have the fabrics and wigs and whatever I need in the house, then I can start making the outfit. Um, I hate wigs <laughs> and I used to actually wait until the last minute to style them. And then my friend Melinda Chan, who is a, you know, like one of the most iconic wig stylists in cosplay in America, she made the incredible point to me that the wig should be the first thing that we should work on because once you have the wig, then you can definitely be the character. So even if your costume is not done, you can do a casual version of the character and actually like, be them. And so since we had that chat, I've been trying really hard to, you know, like maybe it's not the first thing that I work on, but I will try to work on the wig, you know, like fairly early on in the process so that I can really like visualize myself as the character, maybe do a makeup test and, you know, like feel more confident and hyped for the project. That is actually such a good way to phrase that, to do the wig first so you can at least be them, even if you can't wear the canon outfit or whatever version that you want to do. That's really smart. I'm like the opposite, I feel like, where like, I love wigs so much. It's where I feel most comfortable in cosplay. I hate props. I don't ever want to build a prop. I don't like them. Um, costumes are kind of the middle for me. I like a costume, it's fun but the wigs spark joy for me. For me, my creative process, it does typically start with that moment of being inspired by a moment of a character in whatever source material they're from, going, ooh, I really like this aspect of a character, this part of them that they're expressing, and I want to be able to express that, so I'm gonna cosplay them. And 
for me, because I'm, I like to stay very active at conventions and very involved. So I do a lot of events at conventions, whether I'm guesting or if I'm just going for the fun of it, just regardless of whether I'm invited or not. I like to do a lot of different events, whether that's cosplay chess, which is a event that we have in America, which is so cool. I'll talk your ears off about that later if you want. Or a contest, a lip sync dance performance, or an in-character acting panel. I think about what am I cosplaying this character for? What's the scenario? Because that might change how, to reference what Yaya was saying earlier, how I strategize, how I'm gonna make that character. So if I'm just doing it for funsies and to do an acting panel, maybe I don't need to worry about, can I do the splits in this costume? In that case, I can afford to pick a fabric that maybe is less stretchy. It's more resilient. It's more of a woven fabric. It's thicker, but it's going to have gorgeous drape. It's going to be really fancy and really pretty for this character and that's fine. Or if I am doing it for a performance setting where I have to be able to dance in this, I'm hosting an event, I'm doing a high kick or a cartwheel in this, that massively changes how I approach a character where fasteners have to be so important. You have to strap those costumes down so thoroughly. It has to be made of a stretchier material or you have to leave room to move in it. Mobility is very important. So for me, it's very dependent on, I have to love the character, but then what am I planning on doing while I'm wearing them? So. Okay, come over. First of all, I just wanted to say, Uptown, you're giving off major, and I mean major, Camp Noir vibes today. Like, <laughs> I just can't. Uh, but uh, the question I wanted to ask is, uh, do uh, big shits like you have this feeling that you don't want to ruin a character, and so you don't want to cosplay it? Like. Is it still a factor, even like in a small bit? Uh, yeah, just throw it up. I think absolutely. We all have this internal monologue that we tell ourselves a lot of the times. I'm still victim of this sometimes where I don't, I'm hesitant, I will say, to cosplay characters that are considered shorter because a lot of people look at me and say that I'm really tall and I have a really long torso and if I'm gonna cosplay a character that's on the smaller side, when I take pictures with people at cons, it's a good example. My first cosplay that I ever made was Aloise Trancy from the second season of Black Butler. And this 13 year old blonde boy is very small and I took pictures with so many cosplayers who were cosplaying as Sebastian, cosplaying as Claude, who are tall demon butlers, and they came up to my shoulder. <laughs> and so it can make a photo look silly in a casual setting, but honestly, don't care so much. It's not that serious. If you love a character, I highly recommend still cosplay them, because if you do a fun photo shoot and you want to get into doing like you get a professional photographer or even just your friends to take photos of you and someone you're cosplaying with maybe your heights aren't exactly like the characters maybe your silhouette isn't exactly like the character they're fake and you're a real person <laughs> Nobody is gonna look exactly like the character. That's a myth. Do it because you love it. And there's always techniques to make yourself look a certain way in photos. Posing is very important. So experiment and work with your friends and your photographers and see what works best for whatever character you're doing. There's always a way to capture the essence of a character, no matter what you look like or how you feel. Gonna ruin a 
character, okay? You're not going to ruin a character. We're not going to ruin a character. Hesitation, sure. You can be like a little insecure about it, and we all have that, and that's totally normal. <laughs> so it's like for me, it's like cosplaying male characters. I I have hesitation to to like do the male male characters, but then. You know, if I love the character enough, I'll do it. So I've done Leo from Promare. I recently did Yuri from Fire Emblem Three Houses. And I cosplay my Chinese gays. I cosplay Danmei characters um, that are male. And it's like, sure, it's like maybe I have to psych myself up a little bit. But, you know, in the end, it's like I'm very happy that I did it. And I will continue to do so. Yeah, I think we all have this tiny voice in our head that tells us sometimes, no, you can't do that. But uh, I think what we're doing is, is heart. And so if you do it with your heart, uh, you know your artistic uh, process will help you to give you the confidence and the strength to, to say, I don't want to listen to that voice in my head anymore. But yeah, I think we all uh, been through that kind of question, obviously. First of all, I just want to say you all look amazing, like positively radiant, all of you. I have two questions. First of all, uh, do you have a comfort cosplay or do you think you gravitate towards like one particular type of uh, character? Um, I will be more comfortable with some type of character, but I will not definitely comfort at all when I'm wearing a wig <laughs> and some stilettos, even if they are very small. Um, but um, yes, uh, I'm more a fairy princess kind of girl. I love glitters. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm loving being a giant disco ball. But also, I really love to be uh, villain, yes, because in real life I'm, I try to be the, a very good and kind person and being able to switch on the side and being the opposite of what I'm in real life, I enjoy it a lot because uh, you can be very, you can go f far, far away and yeah, I really enjoy making villains, and especially Evil Queen, I did once, and it was very, um, I feel free inside this culture. I, most of the time, I try to force myself to cosplay a variety of things, because, like I said before, I'm very much into, like, a acting, approach to characters and so if I like a character's personality even if it's very different from something I've done I almost see it like a challenge I look at that character and go ooh I've never played like a a really shy really quiet character before maybe I'm usually more of like the flamboyant outspoken guy in the show but I'll give it a shot because I like this character's energy and I want to try to capture that I try to do a variety I do have a soft spot for sharply dressed, morally gray men. <laughs> if there's a guy character and he's wearing a suit or something very well tailored or that his silhouette is really sharp looking and he just has so much personality, maybe he's a little evil. It's kind of fun to be bad sometimes, so I will probably cosplay them. Uh, yeah, I feel like yeah, like it's it's nice to it's nice to play bad bad girls. Like 
I do have fun with uh, the really evil characters, but I also like, I don't know, like this, I keep coming back to Camilla from Fire Emblem because I really like her as a character. I sort of like sort of the vivaciousness, but then also she is, you know, really not concerned about herself at all. She's there for her family. She's very loyal. You know, she wants to take care of her, her younger siblings. And so I kind of like the, the big sister waifu, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I also really like idols. Like, I, I keep cosplaying characters that sing, like Belle, or, you know, I've cosplayed a lot of the Macross idols. So I guess I, I like that too. <laughs> question but uh, I will ask only one because we don't have time like Ky Kyrie said so uh, I will ask the harder one for me uh, what you are thinking about the for those who starting uh, competition contest who uh, st want to start be in the competition contest uh, and you think it will be a lot harder than a few years ago? So do you feel if the starting uh, contesting now is far harder than it was a few years ago? I would say yes, because we saw a lot of uh, techniques improve very fast the past few years uh, with um, a large panel of um, techniques, materials and like 3D printing, embroidery, uh, EVA foam and now we are reaching a level with craftsmanship which is very, very high, high standard. So I would say, yes, it's a little bit more difficult, but on the other side, a few years ago, on stage, everything was almost new. So you have, um, you have tiny ideas that can make pop up the performance, and now you have to think lots more, more and more to find new ideas and but overall I would say uh, yes a little bit but also you today we have access to a lot of possibilities so yeah like you have access to more resources and you can challenge yourself and make better costumes much faster than you know, it used to be, so we are kind of all evolving sort of like at a similar rate. So yes, it's more challenging to enter, but you also have the ability to make better costumes now, you know, because of the materials, the techniques and everything that are available to us. And I think there are more conventions doing contests, and there are even conventions doing like multiple tiers of contests. So you don't have to enter the really hard one you know, you can enter the beginner contest if you're just starting out. So um, I also think there's like more prizes now, like just in general, there are like just more opportunity, like more investment in contests by conventions. So they'll like take care of you better. They will like, you know, want, want the contestants to actually have a good time and a good experience. So it is all good because there, there used to be a time where we were just like backstage like for 12 hours, nobody's checking on us, nobody's telling us what's going on, no water, nowhere to sit, and you're just like, I I'm just, I guess, waiting, you know, to go on stage, and now on stage, they don't know what music to play, you know, there's no opportunity to even 
change what lighting you want. So you're just like on there, walking on to whatever random music they have. So now it's like actually a stage production. So you can like have more peace of mind competing. I very much agree with all these points. Well, now that there are so many different ways to make things, there have been advancements and things, there's more places to buy materials. Because listen, back in my day, when we started cosplaying, there were like two places to buy wigs. And now there's a million and a half different places. There's lots of places to get fabric, stuff to make armor, or whatever it is you want to make. So resources, yes, there's a lot more of them. And while nowadays the standards for craftsmanship at its highest quality might be higher than they were years ago, you can talk to those people and you can go ask them how they made stuff. A lot of people's DMs on social media are open and people love to talk about things they're passionate about. People love to talk about things that they're proud of. So I firmly believe one of the best places to learn is from other people. So if you see somebody cosplaying, maybe not the same character as you want to eventually enter in a contest, but maybe your character has wings and you see someone else who has wings as well, go ask them how they made them. If you like the way they move, if they're really steady and really strong looking and you want yours to look the same way, ask how they made them. People will love to tell you. And when in doubt, YouTube. YouTube has everything. I have a question uh, that I want to ask every people that is professional in something. That's why I ask you as cosplayer, who is your favorite cosplayer or what cosplayer inspires you the most? Actually, um, I'm not cheating on this question, okay? I started cosplay thanks to Yaya because I... So she's the one that admires the most because she did so much for so many times and she's still the, the kind person she is, sharing all that she can, giving her life to help all the cosplayer in the community, so, sorry. <laughs> well, gosh, how do I follow that up? Um, no, to be real though, meeting you has been so cool, and both of you have been such wonderful people and have just reignited such a fire underneath me and just I want to make so many things now I want to do a million more photo shoots now than I ever have because you guys and meeting people like you inspires me so much and even people like you honestly inspire me to keep cosplaying because no matter what your skill level no matter when you started you guys are all bringing something so unique to the community and your love for it, the excitement that you have in your faces just when you see a cosplayer, that makes their day. Never underestimate the power that your excitement and your smile has on people like us, people like you, that just make us wanna keep doing this thing. In terms of way back in the day when I was very first getting into cosplay, um, there is a cosplayer and a cosplay group that really inspired me when I first started. Um, Twin Fools and his fellow group in the group called Fighting Dreamers Productions. You can look them up on YouTube. They're so silly. They are so perfect at embodying cosplay community at its most joyful because they don't fuss so much about making sure the costume is absolutely perfect all the time, and there's nothing wrong with that. I have so much respect for the craftsmanship and the quality of a costume, but there's something so wholesome and pure 
about the way that they approached cosplay and they would film really silly videos that they posted on YouTube of doing skits and being in character. And that was very formative for me as a young cosplayer getting into the community. And so I, they inspired me a lot just to have fun with it and to be creative. also want to say it's the community that inspires me as a whole it's like everything I do is like all the products I try to convince these companies to start making you know it's all because of the community it's like I see what you guys need I see what what would you know what what, what could really help everybody and so and it makes me very happy when I see people like using my products on their costumes and and yeah that's the reason I'm still doing it after 25 years so yeah. I think we still have a chance to ask maybe two quick questions anyone yes Uh, so my question is, uh, you come from uh, different countries and your conventions look a little bit different than ours. What is something that you guys have that is pretty popular in your area, but we here don't have it, like at all? We have a chain fabric store that everybody can go to in every city and buy pretty nice cosplay fabrics from and I, I hear that you don't have big departments or big chain stores that all the fabrics are from individual smaller stores yeah I think that definitely is yeah makes it more challenging in terms of like Hello, hi. In terms of like other events at conventions specifically in America that we have that maybe aren't as popular in other places, there's probably a few that I could name. Uh, one that I brought up earlier, cosplay chess, is one. You, are you guys aware of Harry Potter? Yeah. Okay, so the second, I think it's this, is it the first or the second? The first one? Yeah, then the first movie where there's the giant chess board with the big chess pieces and then Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to take the place of a piece. It's exactly like that. But every piece is a cosplayer. And you're in character acting the whole time and they plan out an entire chess game. And it's like a whole show. It's a performance that's not scripted fully but it's somewhat planned out and it's for entertainment purposes and it's super fun i've done it for a, a few years now and it's it's delightful and then lip sync contests is another one i had a panel on it earlier this weekend if any of you were there but it's it's where you can dance or kind of do like a talent performance of some kind to a song that represents something about your character and you're lip syncing the whole time. Very similar to like a drag performance or like drag shows, if you know anything about them, but it's really fun. Uh, I'm sorry, but I feel like home here, so I can... F no. uh, um, yeah, it's very similar on so many points that, yes, I feel like I'm in my country and... Still Europe, so... Yeah, yeah. We inspire each other, so this is why. Okay, the last question. Yes. I wanted to ask something about uh, EV4. Um, about what products to use to buy to work with it easily, maybe a replacement or how to um, make the texture better on EVA foam. EVA foam, yes. Um, I craft a little bit um, each time I work with EVA foam. Actually, I started uh, working with it in 
2008, when almost no one ever heard about it, uh, because I worked in a leisure art craft store, and one day I was uh, looking for something, a uh, material to create some feathers. I didn't want to use real feather, so I was working and I saw this sheet of almost plastic uh, foam, and I say, yes, I will try with that. And I cut them and I make wings with that, and I say, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> And um, so yeah, I used the EVA foam for a very long time. Um, and first, we didn't prime them. We, use, we used them um, color block. And after we, some other cos cosplayer found the Plasti Deep primer, and it's such miracle things. So you can paint and uh, give some smooth appearance on your foam and the paint doesn't fray and uh, yeah, I really love transforming this kind of uh, smooth um, material into something very shiny. So there are a lot of resources out there for EVA foam um, and I do encourage you to either look up tutorial videos or there are entire books written about EVA foam. Um, um, I find that once you find the density of foam that you like, because there are different densities, so some are um, softer, some are harder, um, so once you find that density, then to me it's really important to have very sharp cutting tools and cut on a cutting mat instead of with scissors and uh, like keep your cutting tools sharp, you know, and um, replace the blades fairly often. And then what makes the EVA foam texture smoother is actually heat sealing them. So after you have, you know, made your piece, you will go over it lightly with a heat gun and it actually will create a reaction and the foam will become even smoother. And then it's very important to prime it properly with Plasti Dip uh, or with um, wood glue or with, you know, hex flex, whatever, brush on. And like, I was always like, I, in the beginning when I started making props, I would maybe do three coats of primer and be like, okay, that's done. And then I learned that for like the best results, you need to actually have like five to 10 layers of primer. So you need to have like patience and um, you know, like just go through, go through that process. <laughs> you know, don't skip on the primer step. Man, I sure wish I'd known all that years ago when I first started working with foam. Knowing your resources is so helpful, guys. Tutorials are a godsend. On the flip side, now that we've heard about how to make foam even smoother, how do you rough it up and add texture? There's a couple different ways to do it. Heat is really your best friend because heat is what changes the foam's shape for you and you can use that to manipulate it in a lot of ways. Let's say you're making a piece of armor and maybe you want to give it battle damage. You wanna add like a deliberate slice in it, but you wanna make it look like maybe a, an ax came down and just stuck right into it and then got pulled out. If you take your cutting tool and start drawing your line in it, no matter like how deep you want it, you don't have to go super deep if you don't want it. If you heat it up again, where you've cut the foam actually expands a little bit and reseals the inside of it as well. So you can do this to create almost like a false trim around the edges of like a pauldron that you're wearing for a suit of armor or something like that. You can also use a wood burner is also a helpful tool. If you've ever seen people use them, they look like a quill, like an old fashioned feather quill, but with a handle and you plug it in somewhere and you can etch into the foam with a wood burner. And again, 
it's burning the foam with heat, heat is your best friend, and then that carves into it and you can use it to create almost like, if you want to make it look like it's made of wood and you want to create a wood grain texture, wood burner is a great way of doing some stuff like that. So look up some videos, see how people use different tools and you'll get so many ideas. Hey, so that was our last question. Very technical one, by the way. <laughs> thank you so much, our guests and judges. And thank you, amazing audience, that we really hope that it was some kind of informative. And uh, our guests are still available today on their booths there on the side. So please come to them if you have any more questions, or you just want to say hi, or you just want to maybe take some of their prints. Uh, they're there for you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And have a good day.